the Sterling Arms 25 automatic. We're going to check it out. Over the years, there have been a lot of gun companies that have come and gone. Some have left a really strong heritage and have been legendary. Others, not so much. And one of the things about the Sterling Arms, it was a fairly inexpensive firearm to produce and to sell. And with that being said, there were a lot that were sold. Sterling Arms was founded in 1967 in Buffalo, New York. And then shortly thereafter, in 1968, moved to Lockport, New York, which this is, of course, Lockport, New York. Uh, they started out with a high standard clone, a 22 long rifle, fairly large target type pistol. And from all reviews that they've gotten, they were pretty well received. After the 1968 Gun Control Act, though, a lot of the small imported pistols, very similar to this, uh, were no longer being able to be imported because they had to reach a certain uh, size minimum. And this was just too small. In fact, uh, I just reviewed the... Uh, Army Galassi from Italy, and that was one of the one of those guns, very similar to this gun. And so, the, really, the market was wide open for an inexpensive, small little pocket pistol, and they made these in 25 and in 22 long rifle. Uh, they originally first started out though with a 380, and it was the model 400. Uh, this is the model 300, and uh, the 22, I believe, is a model 302. Uh, there's not a lot of information about these pistols or about the company, uh, and I searched quite a bit. But I thought it was very neat to kind of bring this out, show you some of the features, how to disassemble it, and some of my um, findings at the range. So first thing we're going to do is go, go ahead and double check, make sure the gun is unloaded. We're going to move the magazine. It is a steel magazine, and it has one of the heel mag releases with a little polymer base plate or plastic. Of course, the gun is unloaded. And, you know, it's just a really neat blowback design. Uh, in 25 ACP, uh, you know, they're typically, if you take care of them, if they're in good shape, they typically run pretty good. Uh, but I did see a lot of comments in different areas uh, where these can have a lot of problems. Uh, as far as on the range, I had no malfunctions from the pistol, but I did have malfunctions from the magazine release. It kept dropping down a little bit. And... Um, what I've done since then, I've taken the grips, removed the grips, and I've uh, taken the spring and stretched it a little bit just to see how it would react. It is a coil spring, so really that would not, and it's a double coil spring, so it would probably be not too hard to replace the uh, spring back here if I need to. Uh, but really, as far as feeding, it fed very well. It shot well. Uh, I'll tell you what, guys, a little tip, especially on the smaller pistols like this, is to take frog lube. It works the best of any of the lubrication for these small pistols that I've seen. It really makes it slick. They did come in the blue and the stainless. This is a really nice example. I've seen some that are really rough. And a lot of times, these were purchased and just stored back somewhere. The cheap guns of yesteryear were still all steel framed. And that really makes a good quality firearm. Uh, a lot of the pot metal and the aluminum uh, alloys that they used later on, uh, those guns would just wear out. And it's one of the great things about these little all steel pistols is that they tend to hold up very well. They're pretty durable. And if they've been cared for, very much like this little Sterling, uh, it'll make an excellent little pistol. It comes in the black grip or in a white grip. And again, it does come in the blue and the stainless model. Uh, the stainless looks pretty good and typically holds up better uh, than your blue, you know, just because of the finish. The weight on this pistol is 14 ounces. And because it's all steel, but that's still a pretty lightweight little pistol, even being all steel. The barrel is two and a quarter inches in length. It is a fixed barrel. It is a blowback design. 
uh, which typically leads to good accuracy. One of the problems with this pistol in particular is the sight. And if you'll notice, it's just a trough, really, <laughs> or a groove in the top of the slide. And the first time I shot um, at a target, I was at about seven yards shooting, you know, just standard. Um, it was stringing them in a very large vertical line. When I saw that, I thought, that's that's just not right. So I reshot it just holding on to it a little better. As you can see, it's kind of a elongated group. Um, this is just a trough, and it's really difficult to see. I was using USA uh, 25 ACP, fairly old ammunition, but not really sure why that is. Maybe we'll do some more testing. Again, it is a really small pistol and it's at four and three quarter inches in length. It's just three and three eighths inch in height. And the width is really narrow. I mean, it's just over three quarters of an inch. Uh, it doesn't include the grips. Of course, the grips bring it out. It'd probably be an inch if you include the grips. They are fairly thick, but you need them thick to be able to really get a good grip on this pistol. It is tiny. Uh, one of the great things about it was when I was having problems with the magazine coming down, I could place my pinky under it and hold that magazine into place. So, you know, that was just a small advantage. Uh, I believe Triple K still makes magazines for the Sterling. In fact, I saw them on the Triple K website. They were running about $34 for an extra magazine. The grips were running $31. Um, I did, on Gunbroker, found a lot of different parts uh, for these. And so, really, this isn't something that's going to be rare and hard to find. These are not super collectible unless you're in that low uh, market for pistols, and which, again, I like that. And I've, I've kind of enjoyed bringing some different type guns to you, some of the vintage little old pocket pistols or mouse guns is what I like to call it. Now, the safety is right here at the front. A lot of them are typically back here at the rear, which is difficult to manage with a small pistol like this but really easy just to bring it forward and of course to bring it back. Uh, the trigger is just a metal uh, you know, affair and, and really the trigger pull, and we're gonna go ahead and pull that trigger just to kind of see. It is a little crisp break, but it, the heavy, it's very heavy. Trigger pulls, you know, just, it's not exceptionally heavy though. When you're out at the range, you don't really notice it. It's just a good snap. And so, you know, just the finger strength and when you pull the trigger, you mean to pull it. So a kind of a, a double safety feature there. The grips themselves have a narrow design that come in like this that really allow you to grab hold of the pistol and hold on to it. Uh, and I like that. I like the grips. Uh, they're very well done, just plastic grips. The serrations, very minimal, but you know not too hard to grab hold of. And with the 25, the slide is really easy to bring back. Shooting the Sterling was so easy because of the recoil. Of course, 25 ACP is so light. And that's one of the reasons why it's not a great defensive round, because the more ump typically you have coming back towards you, the more power you have going out. And uh, the 25 ACP, the only thing it has an advantage over 22 long rifle is that it's a little more reliable. It's a center fire and the ignition's a little bit more positive. But with modern 22 long rifle, uh, that's usually not a problem. Uh, we have 22, 25 ACP, 32 ACP, 380 ACP, and 9mm Parabellum. Uh, of course, the ACPs are all designed by John Browning. Uh, the 25 is more positive than your 22 uh, rim fire. The center fire is just more reliable. Uh, but it is softer shooting, and really ballistically, it's actually inferior to the 22, which is pretty sad. Uh, you know, and then you have your 32. These rounds typically uh, over the last century have been used for self-defense and are continuing to be used for self-defense uh, in a lot of areas. I really would recommend 380 or 9 millimeter. Uh, but here's the thing, and I always say this with different guns. A lot of people inherit these guns or they have them and that's just what they have. And in a self-defense situation, this is what they're going to use regardless of what the experts say. And because of that, they're just going to use these rounds. You need to make sure that shot placement is important with these rounds. And even then, uh, this can be a problem. And a lot of times, just the presence of a gun will deter people. 
So, you know, it's just really important that you know that because having this, you really need to know that you're underpowered. And so that's just the big thing about these. Whether you like 25 or not, it is what it is. And I don't recommend this type pistol for a self-defense pistol. But if this is all you have, this is all you have. The extractor right here, very positive. Again, I had no problems with it ejecting the shells, and they came out really nice. With the blowback design, there is no ejector, just an extractor. Again, though, guys, I'm telling you, there's a lot of comments out there about problems. Uh, maybe with 22, this did come again in the 22 long rifle. Uh, they don't seem to be quite as positive, and it's such a narrow bullet. Uh, the 25 just did very well. So I can't speak for all Sterlings, but this gun really performed well uh, at the range again, except for the magazine issue. Now to disassemble the pistol, there is a small little button right here at the rear, and this is your takedown pin. Uh, in a lot of models, I've seen them just push it with their finger. Um, it's really tight. I don't think this gun has been shot uh, when, before I bought it. And I just took a small little pin with the, uh, with the tip retracted and just pushed it in. And that releases this cover that holds in your striker and so then you take your slide and it's a little bit difficult to get off and um, you just got to wiggle it around because it's, it's binding here with the barrel a little bit it's just a tight fit and I think really it catches on this rear little plate as well okay there we go it kind of popped loose uh, it does take some finagling around to get that uh, and also when you're returning it it's a little bit tricky uh, but not too bad okay here we have the uh, firing pin spring and the retainer and then here we have the firing pin uh, from some reports i've heard that the firing pin it prone is prone to break uh, at different times i mean it's one piece that does break in these you could probably find a replacement on gun broker or numeric arms or even ebay i mean a lot of times you know people have these and there's something going wrong with the pistol and they break them down and sell parts recoil spring comes off and you're pretty much field stripped. Uh, this does not come out. I'm sure that it can be removed, but I'm not going to pull all that out. Of course, there are pins here that are holding in this striker mechanism. But you can see it's a really simple design. There's not really a lot going on. Uh, the machining on this, you know, it's not too bad on this. I've seen some examples where the machining was a lot rougher. I really feel that this pistol was probably one of the later models made just because it seems to be a fairly decent pistol for, the, for this kind of price range. Now we're going to return our recoil spring, put our striker back in the slide. There's a little groove that goes through. Easy to tell what's going on there. Take the recoil spring. And again, this is a little tricky. There we go. Once you get it to this place right here, just take, push your striker in, and you're done. And we're back in business. There are no model markings on here. It's just Sterling 25 Auto. It does say Sterling Arms and then Lockport, New York. Here on the other side, it's just plain. And then, of course, there's a serial number right here. Uh, in the grip, it does have SA for Sterling Arms. And a lot of the small little pistols during this time were imported from overseas. It's one of the cool things about the Sterling. It's made right here in the USA. Now, there are a number of companies that have had the Sterling name. And really, to be honest, when these guns were being produced, they had a fairly decent reputation as far as in the gun industry. Uh, but one of the big problems was litigation and with lawsuits. And that's really what did Sterling Arms in. The biggest was a, um, an incident where a babysitter's boyfriend took a pistol, pointed it at the eight-year-old child, uh, thinking it was unloaded because he'd removed the magazine and pulled the trigger. Uh, it didn't kill him, it shot him in the neck, but it made him a paraplegic. And so it was one of the sad things about these pistols and about that company, a company that had nothing to do with what happened, but yet had to pay the price. So the Sterling Arms 25 Auto, thumbs way up. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. Three different models or four different models. I don't know what they did. The only issue that I had, and we're going to shoot it and see what it's about. The Sterling Arms Company 